Here's what we're going to be making in today's video. So I'm going to be showing you how I made him, but keep watching throughout the video so you can find out how you can win with a chance of winning this little guy. So I'm going to start by making an internal structure and it is important that you make it food safe. Now I know I haven't shown you how to do this one in this video, but I am going to create a different video on making structures, internal structures, and I've said that for a while. So I've printed off a picture for the template and then we're going to start by cutting some small little cakes. Now. I'm just sticking them on here with buttercream. You'll see I put holes in the middle of each one and kind of cut them in half so I can slide them on each side. I'm constantly using my little template there to just check they come to about the right size. I'm gonna put modeling chocolate just under there. Now, you see, I haven't food safed where his legs will go. It's because I don't plan on eating that bit. If I was gonna bulk them out with cake, I would. So I'm gonna trim the body to shape. Just realized what I should have done was keep those and use them as cake pot mix to put around this bit. Then I wouldn't have had to put modeling chocolate there. Now the back is kind of a funny shape at the moment, but he does have like a little backpack. So if I leave his back sticking out quite a bit, that could become part of the backpack, I think. So yeah, let's do that. I'll just shape it a little bit more here. And then we'll create a backpack out of that. So I'm just cutting a small amount at a time and then I'm going to cover him in a layer of buttercream. Now you can use ganache or buttercream. I'm actually going to use buttercream for a thin crumb coat and then I'm going to go over it later in a layer of ganache as well. So I'm going to now use some bigger cakes. So more buttercream on top of my cake frame and then we're going to want a nice large cake for this one. So we've got some eight inch ones here. But again, just if you print it off a template to go by, then see what cake fits closest to your template. And we're gonna layer this up on here. Now the aluminum wire that you can see sticking out the sides is gonna support arms and antlers and things later. But you'll see I've put straws around that where it's gonna touch the cake so that that's food safe as well. So we're layering up the cakes, just keep checking against our template and then we're gonna trim it to the shape of the template. So we want to round off the top of his head or hat. I think it's his hat this bit, isn't it? And I'm just going to dip it in a little bit here where the face goes. Now, I actually cut away a little bit too much. So later on, you'll see that I end up having to bulk that bit back out a bit. But I'm going to use my leftover cake mix. And we're going to make it into like cake pop mix, which is just your cake crumbs mixed with some buttercream. And then it kind of squeezes together. I'm going to use this to fill in this gap here. So I could use another layer of cake, but I thought I might as well use up those off cuts squeeze them in and then we're going to go over with a thin layer of buttercream a bit of modeling chocolate under there now you see this bottom bit wants to kind of drop down a little bit once they get a layer of ganache on there it will hold it up so let's get our ganache on you see i've got some little chocolate lumps in my ganache where i didn't quite melt it properly and then we're going to smooth over the ganache with a flexible smoother which will help us go around kind of round shapes now it will look a little bit patchy, a little bit uneven at first, but I'll just keep going over that, smoothing it down and we'll put more than one layer on as well. Now, if you're wondering if you do need to do a layer of buttercream and then a layer of ganache, you, you don't need to. I just, while I was working on it, if I put a crumb coat of buttercream on first, it just stopped the sponges from drying out until I was ready to put the ganache on. So a little oval on the nose area, kind of pushed up a little bit in the middle. Then I'm going to use some paste for the feet. Now you can use modeling chocolate or you can use fondant or you can even use a mix of both. For this particular one, I used modeling chocolate. And I'm going to roll a thin layer of black fondant to just cover the ends. Now the modeling chocolate has been dyed to this color, guys. So that black just creates the little hoof area. And I'm just going to cut out a little hole. And that's where the threaded rod will go. But I'm going to also have to put a slip at the back of each one so these can just be placed around the threaded rod so you'll see while i did make the rest of the frame food safe the legs i didn't so i'm not going to be eating any of this bit i mean i'm not going to be eating any of it i actually made this cake as a surprise for my kinky friend camila which is her 21st and i thought it'd be a really nice surprise to turn up with this because she's a massive one piece fan but i will tell her not to eat the legs so the legs are now covered in modeling chocolate as well. And then we're going to put on his little shorts or pants. And this is just more modeling chocolate, but I dyed it in an orangey color. I couldn't work out sometimes on some of the pictures if his shorts were like red or orange. And we're going to put in some crease lines as well. Trim it off level at the top. Now, you don't have to use modeling chocolate. You could just use fondant. So for the top, because it's whiter in color, I'm using fondant. So my modeling chocolate is a little bit yellowy colored. 
which you can dye to white, but it's easier if I just use white fondant for covering the top. Now I'll try and tidy up these bits a little bit later, but let's put some creases on the front. You'll notice I haven't done the back of him yet, but that's fine. That's because that's where we're going to put the backpack. So that's going to be iced later anyway. But modeling chocolate does blend together a little bit easier than fondant. Now I have got fondant again for this bit, but I could use modeling chocolate or fondant. And I've just rolled some yellow strips nice and thin. I did consider just painting these on. Uh, anybody that has seen me painting, I'm not particularly neat. Straight lines especially, I find really difficult to paint on. You'll see I did paint stripes on in the, is it Victoria? Is that what she's called? The doll that I did from um, The Corpse Bride? I think she's called Victoria. I painted stripes on that and um, it wasn't particularly neat. I've got a video for that one actually. You can check that out on, on my channel. Okay, so a bit of that modeling chocolate that we've dyed to his fur color around the neck and then we're gonna neaten that off with a bit of white. But then we're gonna bend his arms to shape. Now I'm going to use the template again for the face. So I've got more modeling chocolate here that's dyed to the color of his fur. I've kept it actually quite thick. This is because earlier I cut off a bit too much paste for the face. So yeah, we're keeping it thick just for here. Yeah, ideally it should be thinner. Just pressing it down under the chin, trimming off any bits around the sides. Uh, anybody that wonders why I always have books in the background, I use the books to prop up the camera. <laughs> Very professional of me, I know. Okay, so let's put the detailing in for the nose. So I've used my dressing tool to put in the lines and then just soften it with my finger. And then I want to open up his mouth a little bit. Do you guys watch One Piece? Let me know. I've never seen the cartoon and I haven't read the comics. However, I did watch the Netflix series uh, that wasn't the cartoon one. I enjoyed it, but I haven't seen the other ones to be able to compare. So I, d I don't know which one's best. This character wasn't in the Netflix series. So this is Tony Tony Chopper. So his nose is now on. I'm just going to put a little bit of the modeling chocolate at the back of the head. Again, it's a little bit untidy, but I think I'm going to cover all this when we add the hat so we're not going to see these seams and things too much. So we've got a little piece that we're just going to try and slide on for the arm. And I'm doing a lot of the shaping when it's on in place. I did try at first to shape it and then put it on, but it lost its shape when I put it on. So I figured I would just put it on, then shape it. So we're going to cut a little triangle out for the hand. So that's kind of the shape that you're aiming for. See if we can slide this one on this way around. Still have to do some more shaping when it's on in place. You see it's very soft. You can see when I cut it, if it's soft, it kind of stretches rather than giving me a clean cut. If I'd have let it cool for sort of 10 minutes, I would have got a cleaner cut on that, I think. So I've got some blue. I've just got fondant now this time. And we're putting on the straps of his backpack. Just sticking it on with a little bit of water. And then we've got a little bit of blue fondant that we're hoping to cover this back area. So that's the bit of cake that kind of left sticking out. Now I should have probably cut my nails because you can see I've got the odd fingernail mark, unfortunately, in the backpack. I know it's not very nice. Okay, backpack lid on there. Is that what you call the top of a backpack? It's lid. It's not really a lid, is it? Okay, so it's starting to take shape a bit now, I think. So I'm going to roll a piece of dark brown and we're just going to pop that inside the mouth just so it looks darker in there. And then an oval of pink for his tongue, pressing it down pretty flat. Now I want to make a little piece that goes on the side, like the fastening piece that goes on the side of his hat. So I'm going to try and make that with some square cutters. It's a little bit untidy on the inside edge. So two little round black pieces that we're just going to press onto the underside of each of his hands. Now are they called hands or are they hooves? Or the feet with him being a reindeer. I think he was a reindeer, wasn't he? Did he eat the, the I forgot what the fruit's called, that changes you in that program. So just like we did with the feet, we're going to cover sort of the tips of his hand or hoof in some thin black paste. I'll try and put it so the seam is to the back. And it was quite tricky to kind of cut around this V shape. So I cut the V shape at the back and then at the front, I kind of pushed the paste from the front through to the back and then tried to join it at the back. Again, I should have spent a bit longer smoothing out the seam on that one. Let's see if we can do it better on this one. Although this one, I guess, because the hand is facing downwards, you're not gonna see the seam as much on this one anyway. So just tucking it underneath to try and neaten that off. Next, we're gonna do his eyes. I chose to do it with his eyes closed because I figured that would be a little bit quicker. And also I think it's quite cute. So it's just some thinly rolled pieces of black fondant with a nice point at the end. Okay, so next, the blue for the hat. So I had to use quite a bit of paste. 
I'm gonna roll this out. I don't want it too thick. This really, I do wanna try and get it thin, but I find it's difficult to make it thin when it's such a big piece. So I'm gonna carefully place that on there. If you just wet the chopper ganache a little bit, it will just stick to that. Now, I do have to kind of stretch it a bit as I go along. You'll see it kind of creases a bit as I come further down. So I want to try and pull out those creases as much as possible. Or if the creases are just above the front of the head, that's not too bad because he needs like the front of his cap on there, which will cover it. Add in that little square that we made earlier. I kind of cut like longer bits at the sides, you can see for the, I don't know what that bit's called on a hat. I'm gonna call it the flap bits. Very technical of me. Okay, so I'm cutting out a red circle. I didn't have a circle cut big enough, so I just used a little pot for a rough outline. Oh, so this wants to be really nice and thin, and this is gonna go on the front of his hat here. You can kind of overlap a bit at the bottom, we can cover that up, let's add some texture. I didn't know if it had texture or not. Some images it did, some it didn't, so I would gonna put it on on this one. Then a strip of white that can be rolled a bit thicker and that's just going to go around the outer edge of this. Now these pieces are going to be what kind of tidies it all up and really sort of makes it look much nicer, all these finishing touches. So some little circles or dots all the way around the edge. Then a little cross or an X in the middle of that red circle. I did have to cut that by hand, I didn't have a cutter for that shape. You would think it would be easy, it took me a few attempts to do, to do that X shape. Okay, but then a big piece on the front of the cap. Now, I have made this really quite thick so it sticks out. So I've had to put some sticks, cocktail sticks under there just to help support it until it dries. So I will remove those. And then some brown modeling chocolate for the antlers, which I've just slid onto those wires. He's still missing his ears. So let's push a little hole in where those ears are gonna fit on each side. So that's just in front of the antlers. I'm gonna start with a circle. We're just gonna fold it in half. You'll see I've left the paste fairly thick. So this is back to being modeling chocolate again. Okay, we're just gonna push that into that hole. Again, it doesn't necessarily wanna stick because of the weight straight away. So I have some cocktail sticks in there just to support it. I know it looks a bit messy at the moment, but when that's set in a few hours time, I can pull these out. And if you can see the holes, then I can just stick a little bit of the modeling chocolate back in there just to, just to fill that hole back in. So he's had overnight to dry. So let's see if we can remove these. And hopefully this is now stuck firmly in place. There he is finished, so now I need to box him and get him in the van because he's going to be travelling for a few hours. Got my birthday card ready and I got hold of this cute little Funko Pop and I'm going to give this away to one of you guys. All you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is just comment below with which of your favourite or who is your favourite One Piece character. Okay, so let's box this up. So um, I've got quite a big box. I'll link below, guys, to everything that I'm using. Um, this one is a Le Bon Box box. It's got a nice clear front as well. This one's over here. I guess I want the clear bit to the front. Because how it moves, I'm going to put some padding in, like some of those puffy pillow things. journey. Pleased to say it made it safely to our destination where I surprised Camila for her 21st. So a big thank you to Camila as well for all her help that she's given me at the cake shows and things. So yeah, I really wanted to do this as a nice surprise for her. So happy 21st Camila.